Um, I'm Naomi. And I'm Stephanie. And this is the Espas Trico podcast. We are a yarn store in Montreal. And um, happy to be back a little bit sooner, sooner than, than usual. Yes. <laughs> Trying to get on schedule. It's beautiful, rainy spring day. There's warmth in the air, a little bit of rain in the forecast. And we're still cozy in our fuzzy sweaters because we're matching. <laughs> so yeah, we have lots of, um, we have some new samples, some new designs, lots of stuff to tell you about, but maybe we should start here. Totally. This is just the most adorable thing stuff has ever, one of the most adorable things stuff has ever come up with. Veronica's, your daughter's pretty cute yeah. too. <laughs> <but> <laughs> My number one FO, definitely Veronica, maybe number two. Tell us about this. Stuff. Okay, so this is called the Follow Your Bliss sweater, and it's our latest Espas Tricot design that we just released uh, maybe a couple weeks ago. A week? About a week ago. About well, by the time ago. this is out, it'll be yeah, a couple, couple weeks. weeks. Yeah. So I was really inspired to just go back to the classics, um, you know, really simple top down design. I'm getting to that age where I, I don't uh, mind a little turtleneck. But there's is also. Is that an age thing? Yeah, there's, there's actually a book oh, called okay. I Feel Bad About My Neck that I think Nora <laughs> Ephron wrote. I don't quite feel bad about it yet, but I get where she's coming from. Uh, so there's turtleneck option, there's also a crew neck option, and then a low crew neck option in it. Ooh. So, sort of like on that idea of like, do what you want to do with it. That's it, make the sweater that you, you want. want to make. But the cool thing is that, you know, our, our custom, our, our hand dyed line that Naomi does, the mohair is called Bliss. So that's where I kind of got the idea of like, follow your bliss, put the color that you love into this marled section that's actually also at the hem down here. So mine is in the brick colorway, which is sort of a, a reddish pink. So when you mix it with the white, you get a, more, a little bit like of a pinky vibe. And mine is honey mustard, uh, which I chose specifically because I love this idea that you choose the color that you love, regardless of whether you think you should wear it or can wear it as a sort of fairly pale and rather pink blonde. <laughs> um, I've always been, or in my sort of grown up years, I've always been a little wary of yellow. I wore it all the time as a kid because it was my favorite color. And <laughs> smoked haddock was my favorite food because it was my favorite color. It's my whole so cute. thing was yellow. Um, but I kind of fell away from wearing it. And so when this came up, it's like, I don't know. I mean, I honestly would just it's wear It's fine. This. It's totally I'll good. Face too, but it was the first color I thought of when I thought, what is the color that makes me happy? What is the color that leads to my bliss? And I followed it. And that and is how go. I ended up with Honey Mustard. So yeah, we put together uh, kits for this design using all, like all of the different colors of our bliss mohair there's more of them uh all the sizes all the colors everything is available if you don't see your size and you're looking at the kits you can just hit notify me or send us an email and we will put one together for you um i wanted to sh point out this is the brick color and look how it sort of gets a bit of a pinker tone when mixed with white kind of a no-brainer that yeah. pink is white but that really happens when you start marling these colors so if it's something like big and bold that maybe seems a little bit away from what you'd usually wear this gorgeous concord purple for example will be really kind of toned down a bit and if you want a super subtle effect if you're not really sure about color blocking then something like summer peach lichen uh this is arctic blue these will sort of softly blend in and there's also nothing stopping you from holding one of these all the way through doing yeah. a mall all the way through absolutely or changing the mall um it's just a really flexible pattern to make it your own um i realized when we stood up we could give some fit notes i actually knit a size bigger than steph i knit the size three and it will probably live in the store as well at least until next winter to give you know we like to have different sizes in our samples to give uh you know just so well, people can try, try them on, on and yeah. um, get different perspectives depending which size you might and how much ease you might want so i went with a fair amount more positive ease than you have. Yeah, and you really see it in the arm. Mm -hmm. I find, um, you know, that difference of one size in the bust is maybe not so much, but in the arm, you're gonna see it. And of course the pattern includes the um, uh, upper arm circumference. And that's always a really good thing to check as well as mm -hmm. bust size. And we use bust or chest in general as like a first go-to. But if a pattern includes information about the upper arm, that's great and you should reference it. Because I was definitely looking for that sort of slimmer, like kind of slim fit, but like, I had this Scandi idea in my mind a little bit of like, I don't usually do a plain white sweater. I'll mm -hmm. usually throw cables and all kinds of stuff on it. So I was like, I want something that feels very Upper West Side. It's a little bit Absolutely. from our New York trip. Honestly, yeah, you said 
You've mentioned Scandinavian style a few times when you've been talking to me about this pattern, but that style is you've very much oversized. about the oversized look. And this, I think, it is very much more New Maybe York. it is New York. It's, this, it's like, it's that know. look of, um, like, the pattern photo where this is flipped up and your hair, your hair is, inside is inside of it. Of I don't it. want to do it because I'm wearing lipstick, so I'll... I'll oh, I'm wearing lipstick it too. I'm being very careful. Like this? Yeah, 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 with the cute little hair tucked Which inside. Which is really cute, but you also... This makes me think of those elegant, slim fit um, cashmere turtlenecks yes, that you wear. Yes, totally. Um, with like a slim black pant or like... Maybe you can get a blazer over top of it. I'm totally. always think, interested in that too because I'm like very into blazers at the moment. Whereas I sort of went with uh, that I'm a 32 inch bust and I forget what size 3 is. It's in the pattern. Um, but it is a good chunk more ease than that size 2 has on Steph. And so you can see what that actually looks like on two people of fairly similar bust sizes. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, we're really happy with them. And also um, Hannah's making one yeah, with the um, with the crew neck. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jocelyn's making one. I think she's changing it to a roll neck. Mm, okay. So if I get the details from her, I can always add that too as like on the Ravelry page. Mm -hmm. But I mean, really, you can do anything you want with it. It's really, really, um, it's simple. It's easy to understand. Like it was really a goal to like, just make it really clear what you're doing. It's top down. Beautiful, and we should say and, what uh, what the other two yarn, what the other yarn is, I guess. Oh eh? yeah, it's with our Bonnie DK, which is just the coziest single ply merino alpaca silk blend. So this is just heavenly soft. I've got a little tank top on underneath it. I'm already warming up, uh, and it was kind of chilly in here, and you just put the heating on. This is not a warm room that we're in, and I'm really cozy in it. Um, at the same time, like it's it's breathable. It is definitely not a springtime sweater i would say but unless maybe it's that you know that time of year where sometimes you can wear a sweater only but yes and leave your coat at home but you're still not like fully shirt sleeves that is the kind of sweater it is i would wear this outside today it, it, yeah. in a heartbeat yeah um and you know get going now and you'll have a gorgeous cozy sweater finished for for autumn yeah yeah and i should also say followed the sleeve instructions. Oh, did. you didn't improvise. Lovely. I didn't improvise the sleeves. I followed them and they were perfect. Yay. <laughs> so that was what we're wearing. And I'm going to keep wearing it for a little bit until our next segment because I'm so cozy. Um, but I have a finished object to share. Yay. Let's see it. This is, this has been um, widely documented on Instagram simply because I love it so much and it photographs really well. Um, this is the Scout Mini Shawl by Florence Sperling and Florence Sperling is an absolutely innovative creative designer from the UK but she's taught at various, she's taught at yarn stores, I think she's taught at universities, she's like been at Parsons, she has a really really strong design background too and a background in machine knitting and that has a really interesting influence on how she designs hand knitting patterns and what kind of techniques and motifs she incorporates into hand knitting patterns that might have more of a machine vibe to them. This is a colorwork shawl, obviously, knit from this tip. Yes. Yes, yes starts start here. And it uses Fair Isle and Intarsia at the same time, um, which sounds intimidating and really just ends up being super engaging and motivating to knit i because you've got all these different sections going on at once some and like they change at different rates and you just want to get to the next one and it really does keep you moving through it really well it's i mean i can't i can't say enough about how beautiful it is um can we show the wrong side because it's really beautiful yes. so look at all this beautiful work that naomi's done to keep this so tidy and beautiful on the wrong side it's just gorgeous i can't even imagine and i know you said you made sure to do this when there was good light and when yes. your brain was fresh it's it looks honestly so much more impressive than than it is in terms of work i i got a lot of comments like oh i could never and i would have thought oh i could never and what i would say to that is like really just try um when i say it's a more difficult pattern than I usually knit. I mean that it requires more focus. Like you said, I needed to knit with good light, without the TV on, and when I could focus, and also when I had a lot of time because I didn't want to work on it for just a couple of rows and then put it down. So I would do sort of like, I would get so into it and knit on it for like two or three hours on a weekend and really plow through and then put it away for a little bit extra. And this is about the most processed knitting I've ever done. I'm usually all about the finished object. If you've heard 
that those phrases process knitter and product knitter product knitter you're more about you know i want you it you want it i want to wear it i can't wait for the result process knitting is often you're all about the experience yeah taking longer over it taking more time maybe you pick more complicated projects um neither one is better than the other most knitters are have have the two different focuses yeah. for their lives like i don't know anyone who's just a process knitter or like identifies as just a product knitter or something but i find those phrases helpful for thinking about how well, i go about well, it's like what, projects. what part of your interest a project serves right mm -hmm. like what part of that itch you need to scratch does this scratch now that it's done i'm sure you're pretty happy to oh, have I'm it super happy to have it um it's it's gorgeous. I'm really proud of myself for getting through it. And I think that's something we should celebrate in ourselves more often when we're proud of our of our knits. Um, well, and what's interesting with this project, when you, we, I think anyone who, any knitter who looks at this knows, okay, this is going to take some brain power, some, some skill. And yet it's with one of our most popular kits mm -hmm. ever since we put the kit together for the first time. And we've done it several times. So we know you're out there. Uh, getting inspired wanting to try this so we are going to put together another kit for it um we don't have these colors anymore in the knitting for olive merino that that naomi used for this but we do have the very similar along with anna merino uh, so we pulled together these five colors and so i'd say the only one that's really hitting different is the pink is quite a bit lighter I think that might even be a good thing. Like, I think there's yeah. a lot of people who would really dig it's, the it's somewhat more like lighter neutral, pink. It's neutral, and then the orange is a bit more of a pop. And I would say if, if you're intimidated by this project, if you can knit color work, you can do this. It's a matter of taking the time. I had to take deep breaths while I was untangling the yarn. Not untangling, but like rearranging the yarn balls. Because it's in Tasha, those yarns wrap around each other. If anyone says, like, what's the solution? to yarns getting crossed over in Intasha, there isn't one. That's the whole point is you're crossing the yarns over. So you will have untangling to do. Ooh, that looks really pretty. But in terms of following this pattern, this was simpler and more methodical and good a good flow for me to follow than a complicated lace chart, for example. Um, there is no chance that you're getting lost with where you are in this pattern. Um, the increases and decreases are completely regular throughout. It is incredibly well written. Um, it's actually mostly charts. And it look that's what I mean when it, I say it looks so much more complicated than it is. The what you've got to take time with is the yarn management. Um, I used my Coco Knits Makers board and I had a ruler to climb up the charts because you are using two charts at a time. But I've had more trouble with um, with lace charts, like big lace charts or long yes. lace repeats than this. Amazing. And you know, trying to find where you are in sweater shaping in like sleeve shaping or a lace chart is more difficult than this. than this. Well, it's stunning and I'm super inspired by by you taking this on to maybe add to my skill set mm. too. Like my big weakness is brioche. I should definitely I don't know. That yeah, makes me want to try something to really push myself. Yeah. I think it's it's great. I loved having it as a pushing myself project while I was working on other things that were like TV knitting, nighttime knitting mindless knitting um and i would if this pattern itself or if this specific technique is like kind of throwing you off a little bit florence does have tons of gorgeous patterns that do have like sort of different levels of entering into intasha or color work in different ways to different extents and really recommend checking out her patterns yeah. and her online classes too because that's why i started this it's because we had an online class with her it's like okay this is my moment i'm doing it Ooh, quick change. So yeah, this looks great. So this is another, um, this is a new finished object, a new store sample knit for us by our wonderful Andy. And this is the absolute classic summer pattern, Duchesne by Lila Raven. Okay, comes back year after year. It's a real winner. Yeah, and it looks great on so many people. This is, uh, okay. Pumping around. <laughs> so this is size two that Naomi's wearing. And we say that's a 60 inch bust, right? Yes. So. This is a drop shoulder style. So a lot of that extra room is also helping the shoulder drop way down. So you get this sort of quite a bit smaller cuff, which, you know, I think even Andy checked and was like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah, we're sure. Because there's so much space here that it hits quite far down the arm. And we added, we 
Uh, we one had a one repeat. repeat because we made this in DGH so, uh, Sailor Man, which is a cotton yarn versus the original was in a linen. So it doesn't have quite as much weight, quite as much drape. Um, so, you know, those linen yarns, especially over time, they, they, they get heavier than they fall. So we added the repeat to get the length. So we used five balls for this. Mm -hmm. It's pretty amazing. And this is, color is deep plum. It, we just thought that kind of had a romantic kind of vibe to it, which this pattern yeah. has. Uh, but it has the the yarn also comes in all kinds of incredible bright colors, which uh, and keep... beautiful neutrals too. I mean, the original was in black linen, which is so elegant. But there are a few different sort of natural ecru cream shades in Sailor Man, and it's just it's so comfortable to wear. It doesn't feel it's not a cotton that's trying to be wooly. It is a tape yarn in consistency, so very similar to the original that this pattern was knit in. So the stitch definition for the lace comes out really well. Um, even in a darker color like this, I've got a little white tank underneath so you can see it. Um, I come a little closer. It just has this really beautiful structure to it. It's crisp, it's light. Um, it's a Aran weight and a 14 stitch gauge. So you'd think that's sort of heavy for a summer garment, but um, I can imagine wearing this basically all the year through, especially in the evenings. And it does get warm here in Montreal it's a perfect like air conditioning layer yeah. to keep at the office as well. Yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. And I also love this um, silhouette as something to wear over a dress, mm -hmm. um, you know, sort of a flowy linen dress or even a jersey dress that Definitely. has like a higher waist and you put this on on top of it and or it like just is, dress. yeah, really yeah. beautiful. And uh, what can I, what else can I say? I, you don't, it seems like a lot of recommended ease in the pattern. Yeah, but, but you need follow it. Follow it. Yeah. You need it because it, it provides that, that drape and all of that fabric to keep it airy and breezy. And um, if you do knit it with less ease, take note of that for the armhole drop. Yeah. Because if it hits, if you've got less ease and it's hitting higher on your arm, you'll probably need a bigger armhole. Yeah. And that's where I see a lot of comments on patterns that recommend, summer patterns especially, that recommend 20 inches of ease or something. Like this is 16, um, it's 60 on you. 30, 32, so 28, 26, 28 inches of positive ease on me. If you do less than that, and I've seen comments on patterns saying the armhole was way too tight, it's because a lot of people are knitting with, with less ease, that armhole is hitting higher, and obviously our upper arms are bigger than yeah. down by the elbow here. Yeah, it's uh, it's good to know. And that's, again, like where that up, when you have information about that upper arm, mm -hmm. take a look at it because yes. it will definitely help you pick the right size. But this is amazing. Actually, now I want one. The thing I really like about this design is its simplicity. Like there's no extra at the neck edge. It's just very, mm -hmm. like once you're, once you're done, you're done, which is lovely. And that's a feature that I think is really clever when designing with linen yarn. Like Layla really knew what yarn she was using yeah. in this project. Um, knitting with plant yarns, you can get away with minimal finishing. Um, Things don't in, curl as yeah. much and yeah. So, and, and you want to keep these edges clean in a summer garment with not, without adding too much bulk. Yeah. It's that easy, yeah. breezy easy, living breezy. thing. What else have we got in the way of finished objects? We could keep going with the summer yarns, summer projects. Um, if you've watched, other episodes back episodes of our podcasts you may back in the day have seen a few of these before the reason we're bringing them back is that we firmly believe like summer projects just come back every year in a way that um you know we're always excited about the latest um woolly knitting project perhaps for autumn and winter but we often find ourselves just coming back to the real classics for for summer one of the conversations i used to have a lot with other designers when that was my main gig is if you can get a hit summer pattern, you know, that that will pad your income for years to come. Uh, so it's it's a good investment for designers as well. If you're out there, like we are always looking for the next summer classic. Okay, I've got a ton of stuff here. Which one do you want to start with? Do you want to start um, with Petit La? Sure. Well, this one is sort of an in-between one. I had kind of forgotten. This is a sample we've had for a long, long, long count of years. Um, but I tossed it on over a dress. We had a dreamy string of about three warm days a couple weeks ago. And on one of those days, I wore a short sleeve linen dress to work. And then I got a little bit cold and I dug this out and I'd forgotten about this one. But 
I put it in our stories on Instagram and a lot of people really, really interested. So I thought, okay, let's keep talking about it. Like some patterns just don't, they don't fade they away. They don't fade away. Fade away is the right word for it. And they don't do that. This is the Tayo Linear top, um, which we must admit, at least five years ago, I'm sure. It is knit with two discontinued yarns um, from Shibui, but we have a couple of perfect substitutes. It's a linen yarn held with a mohair, and that's why I think it's so interesting. We don't have many samples like this. It has a really lovely light texture, and you still feel the crispness of the linen with this sort of soft halo. It's a really interesting combination. Yeah, it's cool. They don't really blend together. You can feel the good properties of each oh. in, in one fabric. Um, so this used, this is a one size sort of capelet thing that was just super elegant to and easy to wear. It's got seams at the shoulder and the sort of cuff. I'll just toss it on because I don't know if I'm really coming across well. <laughs> and this is maybe a, a heavier garment to wear it over. You really do want it over as a, a beach cover-up, yeah. a tank. I had like a, a shirt dress on and the collar poking out was really nice. It's got this wide boat neck and it just falls really nicely with that drape from the mohair. Yeah, Again, it's beautiful. Again, it's kind of hitching on, on the top I have underneath. But I also found it didn't really get in my way. You think these bat wings are in the way and they really aren't. No, I think the length is right. Yeah. Um, so we'll link to the pattern down below. It's a paid pattern that is, I believe, still available. And um, it would just be a really great match in any of our Petit Lain Sport, Petit Lain Plus Sport weight colors with any mohair. Maybe you have mohair in your sash. You don't know what to do with it. Maybe you haven't tried knitting with a linen yarn. This could be your way into it. Yeah, it's amazing what a what an interesting fabric it gives. And I know like um Sasha, who goes by Verona Knits, did an amazing t shirt mm -hmm. uh last year where she held mohair together with linen and the fabric was just incredible. Yeah. So yeah, it's like an interesting new frontier, I guess. Maybe not new, but like new to me. And I actually haven't knit them together and this definitely made me want to try. Um on my list to do. I will let you all so, know how it goes. This is one of my favorite samples um, from a few years ago. This is called the Banana Leaf Shawl. I knit this one. It's beautiful. And it's, it's 2018. So you can sort of, like it's this is in our Petit Lain, which is a lace weight linen. So you can see how subtle in on the camera, like the, the little decrease lines are adding texture to this. And actually this goes really well with this. Obviously Ooh, it does. having a plum moment. It's basically a really wide rib with increases and decreases making like one chevron point. It's super elegant and I was letting it fall so that you can just see how much drape and flow that yeah. fabric has. I mean, if you're going to a summer wedding, you're going to any kind of summer formal event, I think this would be such a beautiful thing to have. Absolutely. It's, it's just so, it's so fine. I can't believe you knit this. Like I look at it and go like, oh my God, this must have been so much work but also how soft it is it's, it's really gorgeously soft it took a long time um but it took about as long as any wrap of this size would it's a, i used a 3.25 millimeter needle um and i knit quite loosely so many people might use a 3.5 i forget what the pattern recommends um it's a 25 stitch gauge yeah which isn't too intimidating really and i think it's just it's after so many years of wear it's still just so classic really holds up well it's a beautiful fabric it just gets better with age linen in general i'm talking about now um very well worth the investment and a really nice thing to knit through the summer too even if you don't finish it in time to wear this, this summer, year yeah knitting with this yarn through the hotter months is so pleasant <laughs> yeah instead of having a big woolly sweater on your lap yeah. like i often find myself it's just great beach knitting beach wearing dock knitting even yeah. just in the garden or in the park on a hot day. Yeah, nice to have something yeah. light that's not making you hot while you're working on it. So yeah, that's I really it, enjoyed knitting that it's one. It's a classic. And speaking of classics, this one has been in our store since I don't know when. And we used to put it up in the window and like people would walk in off the street to be like, what is that? Can I buy it? <laughs> uh, there's something about this color. So this is the Sunshine Coast by Heidi Kermeyer. So this is just a, it's a top-down raglan. 
it, it, and this is knit in our uh, Petit Lain Plus. This is three skeins of our is this Orange. Is this really three skeins? Yeah. That really goes a long way. Is it Ligne Orange? They it is Ligne Yeah, Ligne yeah. Orange. This is a color that just, it has so much personality and pop and it every year it flies off the shelves. And we have it in stock now. Talk about colors that we think we can't wear. If you think you can't wear orange, you can probably wear this Because it's like a pink it's undertone pink? to it yeah. that's just really cool. And coral is just, every, the last few years, coral has just come back so strongly. Steph's wearing jeans down here and I'm seeing it against the blue of her jeans and it's gorgeous. Uh, it would work so well with white. Yeah, it's just, a, it's beautifully elegant. And once again, with linen, you see this sort of very simple finishing. There's no ribbing here and it's, it hangs so beautifully. This one also has been in our store forever and I can feel like mm -hmm. the way it's been softening up, but if yeah. this was getting worn all the time, oh, I can't even imagine how beautiful the texture yeah. would be. This is also a really good example. I think this was originally designed with a linen yarn. It's a good example of what to look for when choosing a pattern to knit with linen. It's got a really deep yoke and a really simple structure in the raglan increases and um, the minimal finishing at the cuffs and hem. These are all good things to look for um, that will make a pattern amenable to being knit with linen. Um, I recently wrote a blog post, if you're interested in checking it out, I put a lot of these tips in, but if you haven't knit with linen before, or if you really want to be certain of your result, do look for a pattern that was designed for linen. Because it does fall differently, it does behave differently, it interacts with gauge differently, you'll often notice your row gauge is probably longer with linen than with wool, even on the same size needles and even at the same stitch gauge. I would recommend knitting with linen a few times before you take on just any old woolly sweater and knit it with linen instead. Yeah, get to know how it, re how it responds to you and your knitting style mm -hmm. as well. So yeah, this is a beauty and uh, a classic that comes back year after year and we appreciate you for all the people <laughs> you've brought in off the street to check out our shop. That's gorgeous. And um, how about, speaking oh yeah. of classics, and we have kits for this and they always go like hotcakes. This is a Mona special. The ombre tank. This is a second version. Originally it was in I think a habu linen and Mona re reworked it for the gauge of holding our lace weight petit lin single, uh double, holding it double. So it's lace weight throughout held together so it's um, that's how you get this marl effect that cha changes colors. You're always holding two strands but sometimes you're holding two strands of the same color and sometimes you're holding one strand each of two different colors and that's how you're getting this degradé or, or mm -hmm. ombre effect. And uh, really really simple to knit and so simple to wear and this one is longer than the pattern schematic simply because it's been hanging in our store for so long it's practically a dress um this is something i found i knit a linen tank and it's sort of like a long it tunic grows. and <laughs> even over the course of the day that i wear it it will drop below my knees and then i toss it in the washing machine and dryer and it yeah, slips up right. right back up into almost how I how I knit it and just get softer and softer as a result. And so this colorway we called Pop Montreal. Yes. Uh, we have a bunch of kits. They're all named after music festivals that happen in and around Montreal. So just look at that yeah, swing. Look at so how beautiful. that fabric is behaving. It's just something you don't really get with woolly wools. No. This is why it's so much fun knitting with different fibers. But you could also like if a tank's not for you you could take this effect and like i'm looking at that going like oh i would even do that as like a big wrap mm -hmm. it'd be so cool to sort of mm -hmm. use that effect it's really easy to do yeah and even two two lace waists you could knit this to the same gauge with one strand of petit lin plus if you wanted one color but even just two strands of lace weight held together versus one strand of sport does different things with the texture yeah in yeah. a really interesting way absolutely so another classic that i love in the petit lamp plus yarn you can tell how much we love it because we just have well, it's our yarn too here. this is the outline tee by jesse made designs and there are a few other patterns in this range and a few other things that jesse made has designed using sport weight linen and this is just a really perfect example of that um it's I knit the tank and it was a really well-written pattern, so easy to follow and so fun at the end because this is basically a stitch that you let drop. You feel like so, a yeah. bubble. So yeah, like you get to the end and then you're like, okay, I'm letting her go. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. And it, uh, yeah, just at this gauge, what's the gauge? 23, 23 stitches is a really good balance between coverage and 
light fabric. You know what this gives me? It's, it's giving me Meghan Markle and all her line uh, stuff that she was wearing during the engagement. Okay. She's wearing a lot of crisp okay. linen looks. And I feel like, especially in this off-white, like this was very much what she was she was wearing at that nice, time. Nice. It's got like casual class. Definitely. I can imagine this with a business casual pant. Absolutely. For example, pant in the singular. <laughs> it's here. a pant. It's a pant. But it's also like, it's very, very versatile, I guess. Like it could be worn in all kinds of different ways. But I think it's something about this color and the crispness of it that really is giving so. See, me that vibe. You mentioned Meghan Markle and I'm just like, but it's just so coastal grandma. It's so Ina Gotten. It's just, it can fit into such it a can... variety of wardrobes, of personal styles, um, a fantastic like capsule wardrobe or packing wardrobe item. You wanna to toss it over a bathing suit, denim shorts, and you can actually go into a restaurant. It's that kind of garment. Absolutely. And yet you could also wear it to the office with a, like smart hard pants and <laughs> We're going for all. It's a pant. It's a hard pant. <laughs> I feel like I'm playing like that. What? What? What's the word on this piece of paper? It's jeans. Come on. <laughs> hey, hard pants aren't just jeans. I know. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's all great. Say, yeah, it's really fun to knit as well, and I, I think that's like fun to knit. Gorgeous details. Um, really wide range of sizes, so that not only is it really size inclusive, it also gives you the opportunity to really think about whether you want a closer fitting version, a really relaxed version for you. It's got that range in it. And I just love the crisp stitch definition of the linen in this twisted rib, in this drop stitch. It just works so well. Well, and that's an interesting detail, right? We've been talking about the finishing details on linen and the fact that this is a twisted rib is a really smart choice as well because a twisted rib, it tightens up the knit stitch and that's gonna also help balance out any issues with gauge that um, you can run into when you're trying to knit with linen. Cause it's just it's just a little bit more, your stitches aren't as even coming mm -hmm. off the needles. They get more and more even as you wear the piece, but I think that's such a smart detail to make mm -hmm. it a twisted rib. Yeah, if you are knitting with linen and you haven't often before, if you think that your fabric is looking really wonky and your stitches are looking really wonky, that is not you, it is linen. And that will, it, blocking is magic for linen. And the other universal tip, we don't usually get really strict about, you should use this needle. Bamboo needles will definitely help. Yeah. Unilaterally, we've seen it. Um, it's just, the only time when I would say rips. you should use this. You yeah. should use a bamboo needle when knitting with linen. If you think you can't knit with linen, or if you haven't liked results in the past, if you haven't used a bamboo needle yet or a wooden one, try. Yeah, and even um, those the carbon ones as well could be interesting okay. for that. I mean, we it's not something that we carry, but I do think they're an interesting choice. If you're not into bamboo, you're not into wood needles, the carbon uh, ones are also great for things that need some grip, but mm -hmm. also some slip. Like you kind of need right. a balance and I find they're great for that. Cool, yeah. Kinky Amabari is, kind of fills that gap for me. Yeah, it is a yeah. nice mix of like the, the warm softness of bamboo, a little bit of grip, mm -hmm. but there's something about the finish that still allows some gl some glide. Yeah. So that's our, those are our linen knitting tips. And we have just a couple more patterns to show you. And then we, we're gonna move on to some new products. Uh, this is uh, the Etoile Maritime, which also uses this sport weight linen. Um, oh, sorry, this was the Quince and Coast Sparrow as well, but this is where you could use the, um, our Petit Lain Plus. And it's this, it's almost like fisherman net kind of vibe. Yeah, that's definitely what inspired Lisa when yeah, to designing this. this. Yeah. So this is like really a, a stylish addition. You know, it adds texture, adds color. And the tassels. And, the and tassels look at that just yeah. layered. I've got this useful dummy garment to show it on. Look how it just provides actually quite a good amount of coverage. It's not as sheer as you think for this type of fabric. Yeah. Just falls really beautifully in a... In a and it's super fun to yes. knit. And yeah. just like a really engaging, uh, repetitive lace pattern, yeah. but that builds up something kind of bigger than the sum of its parts. Um, and then I have two more here, and this is a great uh, sort of intro to some tiny changes that we've been making. So you might recognize the um, Eze pattern. This is a Espace Tricot shawl pattern that has been knit in I don't know how many different yarns and how many different configurations and then a really simple stockinette with a lace eyelet detail 
and this one's in the lace weight, our lace weight linen. Um, and this pattern is no longer free. So the Eze pattern and uh, uh, nine other shawl patterns have been bundled together into an ebook that we've called 10 Shawls from Espace Tricot. And so this is now available for sale on our website in English and in French. And basically at 65 cents Canadian a pattern, the idea here is basically we have such a big back catalog of patterns now. We At have, this point, it's an archive. It's yeah. 10 years of design work by a, a number of staff in addition to ourselves and Lisa and Melissa. So yeah, we, we really were looking for a way to manage that. And we realized that you know one thing is we could discontinue old patterns, but we really didn't yeah. want to do that. Um, so by bundling up them up together into what we think is a really awesome package, like we really stand behind it. It just gives us a little wiggle room to keep supporting the patterns because we get emails every day and Ravelry messages every yeah, day. Yeah, we get sort of, I mean, sometimes as many as a dozen patent support requests every day and we're a small team fielding them. It usually lands on me. Sometimes I pass them on to Mona if she designed them. If Steph, if it's a Steph patent question, I pass it on to Steph and that's between Ravelry and email. And, and that's Instagram a too, even. Work. And yeah, like Steph said, we don't want to discontinue those patterns, but this is a way to make it sustainable to keep producing new designs, which continue to be free and to basically ensure that those archive patterns we'll stay still, up to date. And still have support, right? Whether we have the ability to keep doing and yeah. get translated, because that's also uh, making sure that everything is available in both languages is important. And, you know, making sure that we're checking in on everything to mm -hmm. make sure that, you know, does this need a size update? Does this need a new um, yarn recommendation? If some, has something been discontinued? Right. We will continue to release patterns for free. When we've got new releases, they are going to be free. They're more and more going to be living on our website, but you'll, they'll still have that Ravelry link and it'll just be click and you'll find it. But I would just encourage people like, if you like it and you want it for free, <laughs> download it. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, eventually it'll probably move into an ebook in the future. At, right Which now, actually, we don't have any plans to, to do any more at the moment. We did uh, two collections that really made sense to us um, yokes, including a couple of our own patterns, and shawls. And, and stripes. Blue, stripes. So we have oh, yeah, three. Third. The, the third one was stripes, and that has one of your patterns in it as well. Yeah. So, you know, it's a mix of designs. Um, more recent in the last couple of years, but mostly it's the, it's the stuff that's, you know, eight, nine years old. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we don't have that yarn anymore or we don't have access to that designer anymore. Right. So. Yeah, some of these we had to recreate by copy pasting from an old PDF. Yeah, like because or we a word file, the, yeah, we that we can't file, open. Well, we don't have a word file. Or and we don't have them. the photos. Yeah. So. Yeah, so that's to give you a sense of how, uh, you yeah. know, technology has changed <laughs> since we first started it. So anyways, this is the Eze pattern. And this is all to say also, if you are buying yarn from us and want to make one of these patterns that's in an ebook and you don't want that ebook, you just want that one pattern, drop us a note in your order file and we will happily include it for you. You know, that's not a problem. And uh, yeah, if it's, uh, you can also check in with us by email about that as well. So no problem. We're happy to pro yeah, continue you... to provide that PDF for you. If you're like, I just want to make that as a, can you just, can you throw it in? Yes, yeah. is the answer to that. And if you forgot to ask in the comment box at checkout, just follow, follow yeah, up just, and shoot us an email and we'll yeah. send you there. We can send you the um, PDF as well instead of printing it out, whichever you prefer. Yeah. So then the last uh, shawl I want to show is also in that book. So already, you know, good value. This is the Saint Laurent. This is a uh, Jocelyn Mallard design and it's super innovative. You knit one half of this and then you come and knit the other half picking up into the spine as you go so you're knitting along so uh we've done a version of this where it was two different colors in this case this is the same color uh yeah on both halves but you can have a lot of fun with sort of color blocking and making it match your wardrobe yeah. or pick up elements of of what you like to wear and this is in the lace weight patilla Again, really beautiful coverage. You can see when it does fold uh, really neatly along that seam, it's not a perfect fold. So you get this gorgeous layering effect that does look, again, really good in two different colors. And it's a big one too. Yeah. This is beautiful. And the other version we did was in a lace weight wool. So there's a good example so of works replacing directly a, a pattern that works really well in, in wool and in linen. That generally does work out more easily with shawls because you don't have to think about fit issues. Yeah, and the gauge is a little more flexible yeah. for sure. Yeah. So there we go. That's a little like overview of some of our favorite linen samples that we come back to year after year. So let's share some new 
products. Um, by now, many of you will have discovered or been eagerly awaiting and finally received the um, adorable Moosh and Friends book from Lina Publishing. This is a book of adorable toy animal designs by Cynthia Valley. And I mean, we were waiting with bated breath for this and it just, I was not expecting it to be this. It is beyond, it exceeds expectations. Um, I have little notes in it because I have the patterns that I want to show you all because these are the ones that we've put together as kits. Um, so Steph can show you that. Be your This first kit is for Moosh. And you'll see there's a lot of text on the opposite page because every little animal friend has a whole story. It's this adorable. is like you could read this book to your kids at bedtime. You will, if you get this book, you'll spend, you'll, you'll forget to cast on because you'll just want to keep reading it. Um, it's absolutely adorable. So this is the eponymous moosh, a little bear. And we've put together a kit of the Elemental Effects Shetland, which is on sale on our site for 15% off on all colours. But we've bundled together some so that you know you'll have enough for the toy and obviously that sale pricing is a nice little bonus yeah so you'll see these are actually marked as on sale that's because yeah. the yarn inside is on sale um so you'll for all of these kits um you'll have some leftovers but that's great because this is the kind of book that works really well with leftovers and little bits of stash you've built up so something like these 25 gram formats of elemental effects is a really good thing to have on hand for like you've just heard about a birthday party coming up or a baby shower or whatever it may be. They're just really a good amount to have on hand to just like go to your stash and grab them. And you've got little bits for like all the adorable little clothing that they have. But moving on with our kits, we also have one for, I don't have them all on hand stuff to show you, but the animals are what you really want to see anyway. This is Alphonse the pig. He's a chef. <laughs> And his partner is called Mira. You could do Mira or Alphonse with the kit, one of them. And then, can't get over this photography. This is Dodo and Mimosa the ducks, oh and they're actually fuzzy. So oh, so there's some mohair there's in there. There's mohair, so we use mo. I put mohair in this kit. We didn't have a uh, yellow mohair on sale, so for you get a little bonus, <laughs> extra little bonus, you get the. I put the knitting for all of mohair in there. And, um, so and we marked it down. We marked it down too. And they've got adorable little hand dyed scraps for their scarf oh, and sweater. So if you have like advent calendar leftovers kicking around or um, sock yarn, hand dyed and sock yarn that you know you knit your socks and you didn't use all of it, it's the perfect thing to use for, for these little outfits. And a big thing with this book, and it's like written right there on the front, is that these toys are seamless. So if you've been intimidated by taking on toys, they're this quite innovative technique of really trying to keep everything in the round, keeping it seamless. Mm -hmm. You're not doing a ton of sewing at the end. You're and working as you go. She means that I knit the Tsutsu Bear, which is an individual pattern sale. You don't even sew ears on. You don't even seam anything to like pucker it to make the shape. It truly is seamless. And this is the last one we made kits for with the Rowan Alpaca Classic. This is Henri the Orangutan. <laughs> He's a potter. <laughs> of course. He's so dexterous. And that's one of his pots. It's so cute. Even more than honey, Henri loves pottery. He's happiest with clay in his hands. He can sit for hours, calm and quiet. It's just, I could keep going on, but no, you won't. You want to discover it yourself. I can't read you the whole book. And oh, they're just, how they're posed. It's a real it's treasure really fun. And so also there is an interview with Cynthia in the upcoming issue of Lina, which is available for pre-order on our this. site as well. So if you want to find out more about the designer, that sounds pretty uh, interesting, like just seeing the, the sort of teaser for it. I was like, ooh, I'm looking forward to reading that. And also this book is available in French. We have a couple of issues uh, or a couple of copies of it in store. Uh, but also if for some reason we're sold out, you can hit notify me and we'll bring it in for you. So this is... 12 delightful knitted animals as you said to me ah oh. and they're quite um i looked at the measurements they're quite large too like mm -hmm. moosh is about 12 inches high so yeah 
Which is so it's a really nice make, size. They're they're toy size. They're not just sort of yeah, like gorgeous for decorating, but also you know it's something substantial that you can give to a kid that they can really cuddle. And yeah. I can totally imagine a kid just adopting one of these and running around with it, sleeping it at night. They're not these small little, which are also adorable. Yes, but they're kind little of almost more toys. for us than they are for the kids, yeah, right? Yeah, these yeah. are really ones you can cuddle properly, which yeah. is what you want when you're knitting a teddy bear. So that's new from friends. Well, speaking of cuddling. Yeah. Oh, good segue. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to push that off. There, there's some space for that. So um, apparently I'm turning into someone who's like <laughs> really into novelty yarn. I did not expect this to happen. We have two. Oh, yeah, we have two novelty yarns. Yeah, so today. Uh, I'm going to start with this one. This is um, Alpine by Sirdar. And we got a sample ball of this. And it was just hanging around. And one day I was like, I'm going to cast on, see what this feels like. And I'm... Like I am completely seduced by this yarn. So what we're holding here is in fact, um, an entire ball knit into a swatch. Um, this is about 35 stitches here. I'm not sure how many rows this was knit in garter. I definitely say like knitting in garter is your best choice for this. It's, it's not a problem to knit. It would be a problem to rip or to try and fix a mistake. You really want to keep it simple. These faux fur yarns, they come and go. Um, and I really thought I was immune to that, but this has got to be the most convincing faux fur I have ever felt. Absolutely. It's very, very beautiful hand feel. I'm like, you know, I was working on this at home and both like members of my family who at this point, like, you know, like you don't see your own mess. They don't see my knitting anymore because it's so constant. They were like, what is that? Can I touch it? And my daughter was running around with this, like cuddling with, oh, can you make me a doo-doo out of this? And even my husband was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Can I get a hat in that? So I think... Um, it's definitely like if if you're like oh god I would never, never say never. You, you know, touch it before you decide. Yeah. Um, and also, Sirdar has really great pattern support for this yarn. So they have garments, but they have toys, they have baby blankets, they have home decor cushions, all kinds of stuff. And I in fact even linked to that on our website um, product page, so that you can go have a look at it. It's also really good to see how it knits mm. up because you can see some really beautiful photos and yeah they've done a really good job of making the color seem natural you can see from afar all the different subtleties in this but you can really see how each fiber of it is dyed in a gradient like from root to tip basically as if it were real fur so it comes in a big range of color for just to start because it is a little off season right now to be mm. bringing in a faux fur but i was like i can't resist um we brought in the ones that i felt were the most sort of fur like mm. um i was just thinking about home like i might do some um cushion covers in it. I just think it'd be so nice to have on the couch. Well, I want to do a Totoro. Oh, that would be so <laughs> cute. If, do you think you could crochet this? Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, obviously you could. Absolutely. And the, seeing it would be... Yeah, you just have to take your time take with your it. Time, yeah. um, but absolutely, you could crochet with it. So we have the black, the white. Um, this is called Seal, which has this sort of uh, black with gray. And then the one I knit is called Lynx. And this is called Fawn, which is kind of like a That's light adorable. gray. adorable. So they're, and they really like, you don't, don't want to stop touching them. But they're, I mean, these are maybe 36 yards, I think is yeah, what they so, said. Yeah, exactly, 36 so, yards. So I know that can seem really small, which is one of the reasons I went to the trouble of knitting this entire ball up so that you can get a sense of how far it would go. I'm, I'm definitely really into it and uh, we'll be knitting more with it soon. And yeah, I feel like I don't have a lot of um, finished objects today, but I've been doing a lot of swatching. And I think that's really worth it. It's yeah. really great to to show what this gives. Um, well, it's like it's like working away in the back of my brain. Yeah. Like now that I've got the hand, with the I feel think of it. So far, it's going to. It's going to have a moment. I think we saw a little bit of it this winter. Yeah, with Some Park designers. Williams had that yeah. great hat. That was it. Yeah. So designs are starting to emerge. Sometimes it's a chicken and egg situation. If the designs coming out because the yarn is there to finally like make you want to knit that kind of style or is the yarn coming out because the patterns are there but either way yeah we're, we're definitely we're we're into this yeah it's like it's not for everything but how great for mm. cuffs on a sweater the lining shawl of a collar hat. Lining of hat toys and I mean, this is already here you could see that one ball would make fantastic like a wrist warmer Yep. type thing to just slide in under your coat cuff absolutely imagine that's basically if i folded it in thirds you could do that with one ball that would be a great one ball project to almost improvise yeah it's just to also to try it out like Little if cups. you're like oh i want to see if i really yeah. would like this 
I think cuffs on a sweater would be hilarious. Yeah, absolutely. Or like a big shawl so collar. Glamorous. That's novelty yarn number one. Novelty yarn number two. Spice. Um, I think we've talked a couple of episodes ago about Make It Tweed and Make It Rainbow from Rico Creative um, brand. So we still don't have any more of either of those, although we have a huge back order that when those are available, we will get lots and lots of it in. But in the meantime, uh, the company is maybe starting to wake up and smell the roses on this <laughs> and has released Make It Tweed Neon. So we have a green and a pink version. Um, so I couldn't resist. I had to cast on a little swatch. So that this is obviously the pink. It's so gorgeous. Again, if you are not super into neons, let this be your gateway neon. It just can turn so subtle, but you could hold it with something that's actually neon and you just get an absolutely fabulous effect. So this actually is my leftovers from this. So it is a strand of uh, our Bliss Mohair, a strand of the Bonnie DK, and a strand of the neon in pink so it really doesn't add any weight mm -hmm. uh, because it's such a fine uh sort of thread like yarn it adds even less than than mohair would because it doesn't have the fluff to fill in the spaces so you can basically add it without making any considerations to the gauge that's right and uh actually we posted this little swatch on instagram and someone replied with like oh how would i use that with a summer yarn and I mentioned Pasquale Suave, mm -hmm. or Suave, we're not sure if you're supposed to say A at the end there, uh, which is a brushed cotton. So it's 100% cotton, it's got that lightness of cotton, but it has a little bit of texture, uh, a little bit of a hairy texture to it. But honestly, you could also... You could. Let me grab a strand here. Because it's not woolly and fuzzy itself, I think it would work really well with the linen yarn. And how fabulous would it be with, uh, this is Petit Lain Plus, and you had me at Tricot. And you can't really see because these two are both rather fine. I can bring it a little closer. It would just add texture, texture and interest. And that little, those little flex to it. It would be subtle, but I think it would be absolutely beautiful. You're right. I think I just, for some reason, the way I envision using this yarn is with the fuzz factor. But you're right. You absolutely don't have to. But I think yeah. there's something about it. it and it you love knitting it, it with Snefnug, for example, which yes. is a blow yarn, it's fuzzy. Well, because I think what it does is by if you knit it with something that's got fuzz in it, it, it disappears into it and it's mm. convincingly one yarn. Mm -hmm. As if so, it were, as if it a, were tweed. a tweed. Yeah. So if you want to get the effect that, oh, this was always a tweed, I'm not faking anything, this, like, it, this yarn belongs here, mm -hmm. the fuzz of a mohair or brush cotton or brush cashmere or something with a blown yarn yeah. will help this, it blends very seamlessly. Whereas I think holding it with something that doesn't have that, it's not that it's not going to work, you'll just see it, you mm -hmm. might see more that there's more than one strand being held. But I just think this is so cool. Yeah. Like it's sort of, it's the kind of thing that like grab a couple of balls, put it in your stash, even if you don't know what you're gonna do with it, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take yarn that's been sitting in your stash and totally refresh and transform it. it. Yeah. I think it's Absolutely. the transformative nature of this that yeah. really interests me where it's like, ooh, I can reconsider all these things that I already have and think about them in a new way. And I mean, this sweater in that, in that amazing would be fabulous yeah so yep that's uh apparently i'm your novelty yarn <laughs> gal now uh i'm definitely keeping my eyes open for interesting things i mean maybe it's also like being in this role as being a yarn yeah. shop owner has opened my eyes to like oh well i don't know send me a ball i'll try it and see what happens there are so many companies doing really interesting things and so many mills that just have a really playful creative spirit with what they so yeah, it's really cool and uh, really excited to see what people do with it and excited when we get our the uh, the rainbow mm -hmm. and the make a tweed back in as well because I have definitely been doing some work behind the scenes with it. <laughs> I'm keen to show you guys. So we're almost at the end here and I realize we haven't even shown a work in progress. <laughs> I have some, but they're secrets. I can't show them. Do you have anything that's not I, a secret? I do, okay. I do. Um, it is in my Kiba. Oh, well. Do you want to yeah. well, I've mentioned I mean, this a whole lot yeah. because it is my stalwart companion these days. This is the Mood bag, the Heba. We have a few of these and stuff we just reordered. My yarns. Okay. There you go. And this is, oh, I'm halfway through the row. Um, something that isn't quite available yet, but I do want to show you. This is a new yarn base that we're developing. Um, and I've, uh, it's 
so it's so soft we definitely want to prepare a number of samples with it just on its own it's 100 percent merino untreated um it is just it's a it's a rather loose ply to it it has a beautiful drape in um garter and stockinette on its own i think it's going to be gorgeous in color work there are so many yeah. things i want to try it in uh but of course i'm stranding it with real hair got you so yeah when this uh when we first encountered this base i think we all touched it and there were actual gasps yeah uh it's that amazing and the uh the name of this yarn is going to be euphoria but we're still working on getting it all the colors yes. and getting it launched but in the meantime so I'm working on, you know, that whole give a mouse a cookie, like give Naomi a new yarn and she's going to try designing something new. So what I'm working on is just a v-neck, really simple, top down. Haven't really decided on many of the key design elements yet, um, but it's just going for what I just always want to knit, which is top down top simple, down simple you know exactly what you want to wear it yeah. with it fits it's going to fit into my wardrobe i thought long and hard about which color i wanted to do it in um i am definitely thinking i want a fluffy pink cardigan to wear to the barbie premiere um <laughs> so that is my due date for this um and i just love these these two together and very last thing, we got a little fun teaser for In fact, you. Yeah, we were we were set, all set up to start filming when the there was a knock at the door, and this is who was there. This is Emma from La Vie <laughs> and Emma, uh, wearing the Werville sweater from Neons and Neutrals, and with the Bon Tricot logo across the way. And this is an iron on or so on patch that is going to be um, sort of our special show product for Knit City Montreal, which is coming up in May. So you can see she goes along, this little patch goes along with our Bon Tricot labels. Um, so Emma will be at our booth um, on Sunday of uh, the Knit City weekend here in Montreal. And uh, she'll be signing books at a book signing table right beside our booth in the afternoon. And uh, we just thought it would be a really fun chance to do a cute little collaboration, yeah. just especially for the festival. If anything's if any of them are left after, we'll of course we'll bring them back to the store. With them. Uh, so obviously this this should also let you know that we plan to have lots of Labian MA yarn at our booth. Uh, we'll have lots of bases. Of course, our fave Corey Worsted, but Merino Singles. We have Mohair. We have Helix. We have Felix. We we've have got Wensley, it all. I think we, too, yeah, which is Wensley. really exciting because um, it's not as widely whole sold. That, oh, and also yeah. we have those Alexandra Davidoff um, oh, yeah. dragon lore, the, her beautiful, the the, we'll get into it, but yeah. we're really excited about the, the yarns and that we have for the booth, which of course are starting to come in and it's really hard to not yeah. talk about them too much because, <laughs> and so we won't go on and on about it, but if you are coming to Knit City, we can't wait to see you there um, and, we, you know, we can meet Bon Rico Amy. And if you haven't heard about it but are interested we will link to all the information below it is definitely worth making the trip to montreal for this festival it happened for the first time last year but the team is super experienced organizing it they've been running knit city vancouver for years and years so it's a really slick well-run show in a fantastic venue and it's just going to get bigger and better it yeah great teacher lineup um the marketplace tickets do need to be bought in advance so we'll include a link to that too but um if you don't have anything to do it is a uh long weekend at the end of may which is a lovely time to be in yeah, montreal as well totally really better than, than early, early april, april last, year, last year um our city kind of shows up a bit more beautifully outside of the um spring melt <laughs> and of course our store will be open as well so yeah, uh, yeah. You grab know. some buddies go for yeah. a road trip we'll Absolutely. be here and on that note I think that's really, that wraps us up for this uh, episode, but um, really looking forward to doing more summer and warm weather knits totally. and hopefully seeing some of you at Knit City. Yeah, We hope we've inspired you to maybe try something new if you haven't tried linen before or dive into that challenging project you've always wanted to do but thought you couldn't. You can, spoiler alert, you mm -hmm. can. And um, yeah, we'll see that's you. That's about it. Yeah, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye.